Now we start with the fourth part, which covers vectors. A vector is an oriented segment. It is defined by its measure and its direction. To represent a vector in coordinate systems, two methods can be used. We can either use the magnitude and direction form in which we write V, the name of the vector, followed by R and theta written within brackets or large parentheses. R is called the magnitude and theta is called the argument in mathematics, which is the angle formed between the vector and the horizontal. The abscissa and the ordinate uh, component of uh, a vector in which write V, X, Y, Vx along i and Vy along j. You all remember that Vx is called abscissa and Vy is called ordinate. Look at the figure here aside. You notice that when you write, you write a vector using abscissa and ordinate vector uh, components, you can always relate Vx and Vy to r and theta. How is that? Let's check this out. To change Vx, Vy or the Cartesian form into what's known as the polar form, we can use r equals square root of vx squared plus vy squared and tangent theta equals vy over vx. By convention, theta is taken as the angle with the x-axis or the horizontal. To move backwards, changing from polar or r theta to Cartesian, keep in mind we can use trigonometry in which vx is r cosine theta and vy is r sine theta. Notice that using uh, trigonometry here is going to be discussed later. In case you have problems with that, make sure to check the upcoming part. If not, it's fine. These are simple stuff. Scientific calculators can also be used to find Vx and Vy. For that, we use a function called pol xy. We will see that in a short video later. In order to convert from Cartesian coordinates to polar, which is changing from V being X, Y, to finding R and theta, without doing the calculations that we used before, we can use the calculator. How is that? Let's start. First, turn it on. Make sure that the calculator displays on the top degrees, D as in degree, and not radians R. You can use radians in case you want that. Now, once you make sure of that, you can go ahead and start inserting values. Pol is found above the plus, so it's a shift function. We press shift, then we go to pol, insert the numbers. So here we write polar, three. We need the comma. You notice the comma is on top of the plus. We tried on the parenthesis. We tried to put it. We noticed that it didn't work. Press shift, then the uh, comma, and we have three comma four. Once we write the equal, it gives us that R is five and theta is 53 degrees because we have chosen degree. And that's it. Now that we have seen how we can decompose vectors into X and Y, Sometimes you are only interested with a vector along one axis. For this, we need to project that vector on this axis, on this very particular axis or line. The projection of a vector on an axis is denoted as proj v on axis or v and we write underneath it the axis name. We have seen this uh, before. For example, we have written, if you remember, vx as the projection of vector v on x axis. So these notations are used uh, usually. You can use them directly without explaining what you're doing. In order to project a vector on a line, first we specify the axis of projection. Second, from the tip of the vector, we draw a line perpendicular to the axis. You can see these in the figures below. The shadow of the vector on the axis is known as its projection. And the right triangle formed, which you can see here, or here is known as the triangle of projection. In this triangle, choose either sine or cosine of a given angle, depending on what's given, to calculate. In the figure shown to the left-hand side, theta is here. 
if you want this part, you need to use cosine theta because the part that you need is beside the angle that you are given. On the other hand, if you look at the figure shown on the right hand side, the part that you need, this part, let's call it Vx, is facing theta. Thus, we will need sine of the angle and not its cosine. Consequently, looking at the figure here, you notice projection of V on X axis is V cosine theta. You can write this as Vx because the name of the axis is X. Similarly, looking on the right hand side, you notice that in this figure, the projection is facing theta. So Vx is nothing but V times sine theta. The third and the last part of vectors, which is of great use, is addition of vectors. To add vectors, we can use three methods, the parallelogram method or chasis method, they are very similar, or we can use the coordinates decomposition method in case you are given a certain frame. The parallelogram method is simply completing the parallelogram, having the two vectors as its sides, and the diagonal is the vector sum. Chaseless method or rule is uh, simply translating one of the vectors to the tip of the other vector. Here we translate V2 to the tip of V1. Then the vector obtained from the very starting point to the very ending point is V12. By that we can find the vector. Then you use some trigonometry and triangle rules in order to do further calculations. The best method that we use in uh, sciences, in physics in particular, is the projection method, in which we take each vector, decompose it into two parts, let's say x1, y1, and x2, y2. Then, for the sum of both, v1, 2, add x1 to x2, and add y1 to y2. This is y1 here, we've written it by mistake. The obtained vector, v1, 2, is x1, x2, and y1 plus y2. You can further use the rule of x square plus y square in case you want to find magnitude or theta and tangent theta in case you want an angle. To set everything we have done on track, let's solve these two applications. Application 4, represent each of the following vectors in x or y coordinate system, then using trigonometry when needed, determine the magnitude and direction of each of the following vectors. This is a simple technique. Go ahead, you can either use the calculator with the polar uh, coordinates uh, technique that we learned before, or you can simply use trigonometry as we have seen uh, in previous parts. The second application is about vector decomposition. You are supposed to determine X and Y components of each of the given vectors. In the first set, you are given three vectors, either horizontal or vertical. In the second set, you are given three inclined vectors, you just need to pay attention to whether you're going to use sine or cosine and whether the signs of each part are positive or negative. That's all. Don't forget, you can solve these and discuss your answers with your instructors or feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We can reply as soon as possible.